again, and first thing we look at is a bar chart. This is basically still a dig at Fauci in reference to Scandinavian countries in comparison to the United States in reference, in this case, new deaths smoothed per million. Now, this is comparing apples to apples. So how does the United States do compared to the Scandinavian bloc? Let us proceed, especially in countries like Sweden, which basically did very little in reference to pandemic mitigation. So here we go. United States, Sweden, Norway, Iceland, Finland, and Denmark. As we begin to proceed up the bar chart, these are new deaths cumulative, smooth per million, starting from September 1st, 2020 to tonight. There we are, new deaths smooth per million. Yes, this is a bar chart from September 1st to 2020 to today, tonight. And here we go. That's how the United States compares. Now, if you're calling shenanigans on this, here is your new death smooth per million right here. That's the numbers. And then if you do a comparison, new death smooth per million cumulative, obviously since September 1st, 2020. And look what we have here. You see the numbers. Now, this is important. Iceland is gonna be real important as we scroll back up. Remember, zero deaths per million at this point in time up to October 10th. Norway, very little. Sweden, very little. Obviously, the United States is compared often to Sweden, which Sweden did very little. And the United States itself, now you're going to these big numbers. And henceforth, we end up with this huge bar chart where here is the United States. Apples to apples, deaths per million. Uh, way out of whack. It looks almost like if you had, if you were doing statistical analysis, it is such an incredible outlier in reference to new deaths per million since September 1st, 2020, that you'd almost you would be thrown out if running a histogram or something like that. But that's what it stands and that's what it is. All right, let us proceed as follows. All right, new cases smooth per million, that's the bar charts. All right, and then here we are again, compared to Scandinavian countries. Now remember, this is not totals. We're doing deaths per million. So we can have a fair comparison. And I have a hypothesis to that, and you'll understand why in a second. All right, here we are. And then we go back up. We are looking at new cases smooth per million. Now here it is. You see Iceland? You get the spike there. Now that's interesting, because look at that. You get that huge, huge jump. But yet, when you go back to deaths, you're looking at nothing. So the interesting part about it is, yeah, you have enhanced transmission, but transmission is not correlating to fatality or lethality. So it's a really, really positive sign in reference to antigenic drift. Yes, a lot of people may catch it, but yes, as well, a lot of people may not be succumbing to it, uh, at least in the Scandinavian countries. All right, this is new cases smooth per million. Again, there's Iceland and of course, Denmark. And let's look at Sweden. There we are. A little bit of a rise in cases, but cases obviously as shown before are not as important as lethality. It's like the thing of the common cold. I'm not gonna try to belittle it per se, but at least to the uh, people from Iceland or Iceland itself with the lethality that low, that's pretty amazing. All right, then we here we go here. New deaths smooth per million. United States is way ahead, unfortunately, in reference to the pack. And this is what's important. You have to remember when it comes to confounding factors. And we're going to look at that in a second. Because it may not be mask and distancing as directly as we see. And we can psychologically become emotionally attached to an outcome. Now, there's no doubt when I do these charts that there's going to be some confounding and bias on my aspect because I'm intentionally looking for problems. And even be my by me intentionally looking for problems, I am creating bias because I am looking for problems and not necessarily what's right. But let us proceed as follows. So we go, this is our cases, so on and so forth. All right, now let's go into the count, no, I'm just going to do data. Now here, let's go into the confounding aspects itself. All right, I'm way ahead here. Let's go right here. This is important 
It may not seem important initially, but, but look at this. We have right here, it is so predominant in people's daily lives, it actually is affecting their dreams, COVID-19. So many dream clusters were the, the thematic and so on and so forth, nightmare clusters. What are people having nightmares about? Now think about all of your, your public uh, messages or public service announcements, so on and so forth, in reference to COVID-19. This programming or behavioral conditioning or whatever it is, is so powerful that things which are normally seen as positive elements in reference to dreams are now seen as negative. Per se, let's go right here, uh, ignoring social distancing, hugging by mistake, hugging by mistake, hug handshakes. I guess, I don't know what that is, but still, I, that's understandable, I guess. Restrictions related to handshakes, handshaking distance, lapses in social distancing, restrictions related to gatherings and crowded parties. Wow, that is amazing, amazing, and quite disturbing aspect to the whole pandemic. How it literally is hardwiring itself into people's brains, which is affecting how they dream. To proceed forward, now there's a point to this. Now look at this. This is part of the problem which creates stress. When you people get mixed messages and they didn't know how, even if they desire to comply, but they can't figure out how to comply, it's something that we used to use for brainwashing or conditioning or breaking a person down, let's say for example, in boot camp when you get conflicting orders. And here we have right here from the governor of California, going out to eat with members of your household this weekend, don't forget to keep your mask on in between bites. All right, I put this little not equal sign here. And for the reason being, what does it say? Minimize the number of times you take your mask off. Mixed message. Here you are taking your mask off, putting it back on between bites, you're touching your face continuously. This makes no sense and therefore creates a level of stress because people don't know how to conform if they desire to conform. Number two, we look at Fauci. Fauci gave an interesting interview uh, on MSNBC and he makes this statement. You don't get a pandemic that kills a million people and it isn't even over yet with influenza. Think, number one, Influenza is really never over. It's always every year, henceforth vaccination campaigns and so on and so forth. So from a, a critical thinking aspect, that makes little sense. And the thing about Fauci is he had an interview in the Journal of Cell, which was well thought out, well articulated, and he covered the influenza pandemics that killed millions of people. And where he says right here, you don't. Mixed message. I don't know the rationale into why he would say something he know is wrong, especially since he just wrote articles on it not too long ago and referenced in the Journal of Cell. But for those not familiar with the pandemics in the past, the flu, let's go to Wikipedia and come on here, there you are. And there's your deaths worldwide, blah, 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 so on and so forth. This is not an aspect to prove Fauci wrong, I just it gives you an idea that something is just not right. All right, let us continue to proceed as follows. All right, here we go. Now look at this. Another aspect of confounding. As I'm doing this charting and graphing and pulling up the information uh, and finding information which is not correlating what is what is being promoted in the media, I have to bring this up because it is being validated over and over again in studies, but people or observational uh, data collection, and they're not reporting it. They're not seeing it. They're still giving the old mantra of the, what they had in April. Let us proceed as follows. You'll see. All right, this is from deaths from influenza, pneumonia, and coronavirus in England and Wales all the way up to August 2020. Now, Britain is going through some crazy lockdowns right now, and it's getting worse. How does coronavirus compare to influenza and pneumonia? Here we are. From their own data, and now I'll have the links to the data as well so you can follow. Look at July. Look at August. April? Yeah, I understand the lockdowns and the pandemic and the state of the emergency. But they're not releasing the state of the emergency even though COVID is now less lethal than basically 
influenza and pneumonia on average, on average, and going into July and August, which is a really strong sign as we talked about prior of antigenic drift, which like, what the heck? Seriously, if everyone has access to this information, why are they still pretending it's mid-April? But to proceed as follows. Now, I have a hypothesis in reference to basically how the virus is spreading in some aspects. Many of you may be familiar, and we've all seen it by now, where face masks are just trashed and thrown all over the place. And you may find one aspect really interesting, that face masks, they're like little biological warfare landmines. You're walking on the sidewalk, you see people throw them all over the place, they throw them in trash cans. I am disturbed by the amount of face mask trash which now litters our streets as well as our wilderness. But here is why it may appear that areas that lock down more, that require face masks, seem to have dramatic increases in transmission rates. And wouldn't it be ironic if it's because people are using more face, face masks more often and they just throw them all around arbitrarily that the aerosolized aspect of it, yes, I did say aerosolized because they've known since, what is it, July, that it is aerosolized. The question is how small if you don't want to be below five microns. Well, the information we're about to review is from this one particular article. So let us proceed. All right, the virus can be tracked all over the floor as indicated by the 100% rate of positivity from floors. This was in a pharmacy which we tested a while ago. The soles are the shoes of the medical staff or the main carriers. Now, here's the thing. Masks need to be disinfected before discarded. Think about that. Masks need to be disinfected before discarding. So here you are, you have this mandatory lockdown, mandatory mask could be required of everyone. And then all of a sudden, boom, 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 it's thrown all over the place. Now people go, well, look at Asia, they wear masks all the time too, but you have to keep in mind too. In Asia, their diets are very different. They eat a lot of fermented foods, uh, high, uh, you know, good microbiota and so on and so forth. In the U.S. and other countries where there's a lot more processed foods, less uh, fermented foods, uh, we're not getting a lot of that positive bacteria, which also helps with the immune system, especially. And also, too, we're also more prone to dysbiosis. But to proceed. Also, too, the exposure risk is also present upstream. Upstream. Think about that. And the maximum transmission distance of the aerosol, from uh, SARS-CoV-2 aerosol, or coronavirus 2, 4 meters those not that familiar with metrics, you're looking at four times three, you're looking at 12 feet away, upstream. Think about that. All right, now here's an interesting aspect from the study itself. This is where they found the majority of the virus. Floor, trash cans, the masks, and basically, even more so, in many cases, on the trash cans of the floor than the air. Pharmacy floors, where the patients never even entered, but the doctors did. 100% positivity rate. The shoe soles of the medical staff. So here we could be looking at this, and this is where confounding could play a role. We could think, oh, well, let's pay attention to the masks, see if we're wearing a mask. But the irony is, every time you take your shoes on, or or I should say take your shoes off, every time you walk on a floor of a grocery store, whatever it is, maybe if we just didn't focus on the masks, and maybe if we just said, hey, let's get shoes where the soles of the shoes are basically designed in a way where they're antiviral, antibacterial. We have pens which have zincs embedded in them or silvers embedded in it, and they are anti-infectious. So if the shoes are spreading the virus because it's coming from the floor for whatever reason or aerosolized in other ways, antibacterial shoes, that'd be odd. But it looks like you have much of a better chance of uh, much more importance than masks, at least in this case. All right, and also too, if it's aerosolized, then the concern about being aerosolized if it goes below five microns, then masks will not do much. But even in that case, 
let us proceed. Masks. All right, now I'm going to get into a mask argument. I'm only going to get a mask in reference to the science. This was a commentary, obviously, by very, very qualified individuals. And if we look into more of the detail of the article, and I'll have the links itself, they said, quote, a uh, cloth mask or face covering does very little to prevent the emission or inhalation of small particles. An open letter to the World Health Organization signed by 239 scientists to the inhalation of small infectious particles is not the only biologically plausible, but the epidemiology supports as a support mode of transmission, the virus that causes COVID-19. So basically they're trying to say, hey, you know, the masks are there and we support the mask based upon assumption. But it's dangerous to assume that the mask is the only way that you're blocking the COVID-19. In this case, if we go back to here, obviously, look at transmission rates, floors, trash cans, people taking their masks off and use them as litter, littering our ground, uh, whatever. I mean, basically, these drops or aerosolizations are going to continue even if you take a mask off and throw it away or throw it on the ground or throw it on the street. Something to think about. But to proceed. All right. Also, too, if people want to know where their data is being accumulated to and the, a, lot of these, in, a lot of these models are being made, uh, yes, they're being funded by the, the conspiracy type stuff. But again, it's not for conspiracy. It's in order to determine confounding. All right, there you are. All right, next we go here. All right, yep, that was the one article. And from the aerosolization, uh, the, arrows, the, the coronavirus being aerosolized. Let us proceed with the charts as follows. I'm going to run through it real fast. All right, we're going to run the information here. Let's get the kernel running. I'm not going to run each cell individually, so we can wrap it up. And restart and run all cells. This is going to give us COVID by state. Now, let's see how Florida is going to compare to the rest of the US. Remember Florida really began to uh, lift its lockdowns not too long ago. And people thought Florida was gonna fall apart. And they also thought Georgia was gonna fall apart when it did it earlier. But let's proceed. All right, I'm gonna go past all this information here. And oh, first we're gonna go to the hospitalizations and the increases first before we go to those that, that information. So here we are, the mind, yeah. So there's hospitalization increases, or a positive increase, I should say, and the hospitalization increases are still basically going down. Uh, very little correlation with the increases, as we saw in Iceland. But to proceed, all right, there we are. Again, the algorithm still unexplainable. And again, this is data up to today. And then in a short period of time, uh, and I'd say like within the past, what is it, close to 30 days, positive increases, the hospitalization increases, pretty much nominal. Uh, hospitalization per case, death per case, interesting. We saw that information before. Again, this is from the beginning all the way to now. And then pretty much the same thing. And let's just get to the next one real fast too. This is by states. Now we go to the Florida one. All right, let's get these kernels running or the kernel running to speed things up. Let's go to the top here. All right, here's basically our data. We are basically building our data frame, scrolling down, scrolling down, scrolling down, scrolling down, trying to speed it up. All right, here we go. Florida, New York, California, Georgia, and South Dakota. Now, South Dakota is a wild card. Just wait a second. All right, and we're looking at population per 100,000. So we make sure we're comparing apples to apples. First one we're looking at is we are looking at death increase per 100,000. Now keep in mind, this is not averaged. So you see ups and downs, ups and downs. So you may see South Dakota up here, but then you see non-existent there. So do not be confused by the chart. You'll see why in a second. All right, look at this. Florida, October 10th. Remember how they're all predicting doom and gloom and the apocalypse was going to occur? The data does not support their hypothesis about the destruction of Florida. Proceed. Here we go. This is positive increase per 100,000. Again, 
South Dakota, wild card. But I want to give the data to be truthful. Florida, the cases actually began to drop. So look at this aspect. Here we are, Florida, the news, you know, the governor was getting a lot of flax and we're never going to have lockdowns again, so on and so forth. And look, and the media doesn't report it. That's why we're doing the data analysis here. And it got a little long, but you'll find it worth it. All right, here we go. Now we're going to death increases per total. Look at New York. Here we go. They decreased their lockdowns and so on and so forth and isolating areas, no church, no restaurants. Now look what South Dakota is. You see what I mean? A lot of times there's no deaths. So even though the chart would look like, whoa, South Dakota is like falling off the edge of the earth. No, it's not. The data is not supporting it. It just looks that way since there's like 10 people in South Dakota. Just one person gets sick. That's 10% of the population. And of course the charts are going, woo, like that. But New York's not doing too well. California has pretty much been stagnant the entire time. And of course, I don't think the disease is going down because people are wearing their masks in between bites. Thank you, Governor Newsom. All right, let's go to the next one. We have, let's go the COVID world. Here's our data for the world. All right, let's get our thing together. We are gonna run our kernel. I will get the information. I changed the way I did it here so the requests are made up to date. And I'll post at least that part online. Restart kernel, run all cells. Boom, ba -da boom, ba -ba -da -ba. Here we go. Do, do, do. Please be patient. There we go. A lot of data to go through, but Python is incredible at data analysis. Here we are. Look at new cases smooth per million, new deaths smooth per million. Again, antigenic drift. We had a G strain come around, and basically the transmission rate increased dramatically. We're still thinking the old strain, I think it was D strain. But the lethality was far higher, but now look at this. Yet we're still in a state of emergency. That's the real crime, the state of emergency. Especially since the correlating data, I'm not going to say causative, from every other place, including Florida now, when they release the lockdowns and let people enjoy life, enjoyment is a very powerful immune boosting element. Don't get me wrong. When you're happy, it really does make a difference in the immune system. Keeping people unhappy and isolated in a room, out of the sun. Yeah, you see what I mean. All right, let's go here. And the mortality rate, declining. Again, this is all the way up to current. All right, here is that da, 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 data. There is our USA compared to Sweden. Let's not be that dead horse, so to say, if that's a politically correct way to put it. Um, this is basically looking at our new cases smooth. Doo, doo, doo. We already saw that. Uh, we'll look at our mortality again. What am I doing? Repeating the, the same data. All right, here we go. All right, here. Let's see right here. Let's run the information. This is where we are. This is the information one I was find. Whoops. Great Britain lockdown. Look at this. And this is new cases, smooth per million. Look at that. All right. Look at our, our Asian friends. Here's Sweden, a little higher, but the deaths are really low, as we point out, compared to the United States. Here's the USA, continuing on its high level there. And, of course, Taiwan, Singapore, South Korea. You get the picture. Let's keep moving down. We're only working off of data. We're not working off of impression. And so here we go. This is within a short period of time. I think I broke this down to a 14-day period. Yeah. This is a 14 day period gap as of October 10th. Sweden sometimes misses a day in reporting. There's the United States, Taiwan. Let's speed this up. You get the picture and this is new deaths per million. All right, scroll down. All right, let's get this information here. Just in place. And this is total case per million to deaths per million. And there we are, USA, Great Britain, Compared to Japan, Korea, Taiwan, Singapore didn't report, so it dropped off the bar chart there. This is totals. But look at this. Singapore and Iceland, which is really interesting as far as the comparison. High transmission rate, low fatality rate. I would be sending every dang epidemiologist we had to scroll through it like a detective case and find out what the heck is going on. Which is, an is it something in the diet? 
Is it, for example, Singapore or Sweden having something that basically could be somewhat innocuous, that it could contain high levels of herpesitin or curcetin or some uh, lactobacillus bacteria, whatever it is, it's giving them some sort of uh, a massive resistance to lethality of the disease, yet USA and Great Britain, with a mass number of lockdowns and so on and so forth, seem to fail. Is it people throwing masks all over the place and masks accumulating in the streets and the trees, everyone else blowing around in the wind, creating some sort of biological um, delivery system? Yeah, I think if you trash a mask, it becomes a biological delivery system for COVID until proven otherwise. All right, let's run this. All right, and there is our total deaths per million, sadly, compared to the other countries. And now we're gonna to go to other one, which is really disturbing me the most, the collateral damage due to the social infrastructure breaking down uh, due to COVID, the third world. Yeah, here's the excess death rate compared to the world death rate. And again, this is just done every single week as we go ahead. All right, now we are gonna to go to my final one. This is the Monte Carlo simulation to see exactly where we stand. Monte Carlo simulation is gonna be up to date. So, it's going to be from today forward, I think about 40 days. Let's run that. Here we go. Ready? Boom, ba boom. Monte Carlo. This is predicting where it's going to head in the future based upon the current data from the past. There we go. All right, here we are. New deaths to say, well, not to Monte Carlo yet. Right, hang on. Do, 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 do. There we go. Total case prediction, again, pretty linear, up to December 9th now. Uh, new cases per million, pretty much looks like it's rolled across the board. It can go up or down, but it looks like, because the cases continue to go up. So if we just break it right in the middle, let's just say there. I'm not even concerned about cases, I'm more concerned about deaths. And look at this. Let's look at our Monte Carlo simulation. Monte Carlo simulation predicts it's gonna to continue to decline. Uh, at this point in time, now remember, it's not taking into account seasonal uh, infection rates rising by about 24% or so. But it even has an outlier here where it does rise a little bit and then to, to continue to decline. Again, as time goes forward, it may change a little bit because of, you know, we're running into flu season, so on and so forth. But if things stay stable uh, through the simulation itself, if we draw a straight line, it would be declining. Again, the truth will be in the pudding. Again, that's the Monte Carlo simulation. Again, that's all the data that we have uh, just for look at. Um, basically, in reference to it, I'll do it again next week. It was a little long, but I want to give you an idea of the confounding. So we, even when you have data, for example, like this, and you have information out there, for example, if we go back, let's say, to here, um, Sometimes the conditioning becomes so strong that when the answers may lay before you, here you have, for example, Great Britain going into this massive lockdown, yet they have all the data, but they're trained now in a reactionary way to behave a certain way because it's been going on so long that now they see the sky is falling when actually the clouds may be clear. Again, Ralph signing off once again. I'll have some of the links to the stuff. I'll show you, this. I'll, I'll post some of the new code so that people can basically get the OWID data instantly and update all of the time if you're into Python or Python analytics. And uh, this is a long one, but I'll catch you all next time. Ralph signing off, gratitude, and thank you. See you all next week.